Howdy, y'all. I doubt it's any secret to you that Oliver Anthony's new song, Rich Men North of Richmond, has been a huge overnight success. By the way, in case you're not familiar, uh, he has made a statement since, and his real name is actually Christopher Lunsford. All Oliver Anthony was a tribute to his grandfather, just so you know. So I'm going to refer to him as Oliver Anthony because he said he's fine being called either, but that isn't technically his real name. This music, this song that he's written, Rich Men North of Richmond, is a soulfully written and soulfully performed song that highlights the pitiful state of this country and the plight of the average man while pulling no punches and calling out Washington, D.C. as being responsible for a large degree of it. If you haven't heard the song yet and you want to check it out, I feel like it's worth mentioning that it does have some strong language, so keep that in mind if you go and give it a listen. This song, as, as powerful and impactful and as much of an impact as it has had on people, as many people have, have related to it, it's a dangerous song in many ways. So instead of doing a regular reaction video, I, I wanted to briefly highlight the reasons this song is dangerous. Some good, some bad. The first reason it's dangerous is it's a, it's a danger to Oliver Anthony. He's called out a lot of powerful folks, and a lot of people are taking note of this song. Some people call folks out, and nobody really pays in mind. But this time, people have noticed. People have, have, have rallied behind this song in a lot of ways. And unfortunately, we live in a world and a country where if you take a stand like this and you make an impact with it, especially if you stand alone, likely it's not, the uh, rich men north of Richmond are going to find some way to come after you. Now, that's not saying some government conspiracy all the time, although, as we've seen before, it's certainly not uh, out of the realm of possibility for the government. Sometimes it's even things just as simple as corporate people coming after you to, to throttle you so that your your music or whatever you're, the case, in this case music, doesn't get out there. Sometimes they may try and buy you out. Oliver Anthony's apparently gotten at least uh, well, at least a handful of substantial offers from what he said, from what I can pick up. He's definitely gotten a, at least one very big offer. I would guess more than that. I got the impression there was more than that. And he's already said he's not interested in that. He's, he's not interested in touring or performing or anything like that, really, um, as a big wig, if you will. But... At the same time, uh, it's very common to control people by buying them out, get them dependent on the money or make them think they're dependent on the money. And, uh, hey, if you perform this song, you write that song or, or whatever, well, we're just you're not going to make that money anymore. And they can buy you out that way. Maybe uh, they get uh, your company to fire you. Sometimes just opportunists and vultures will wear you out with disingenuous offers that are only oriented on profit that will undercut the message that somebody is trying to to promote. So there's danger there for Oliver Anthony if there isn't danger to his, his actual life, which hopefully there's not, but you never know. This is gonna this is and is going to be controversial, and anytime there's controversy, unfortunately, some people do crazy things. It's dangerous because this song is dangerous because it motivates people. This song makes a powerful emotional impact and it speaks so clearly to the situation that we're in today as Americans. The way that we're living isn't right. The way that the country is isn't right, and this song says it in such a powerful way. That can motivate folks. It does motivate folks. That can open folks' eyes, get them to admit to themselves something that they've deep down known to be true. And when they do that, they have to come to terms with the reality. That motivates people to do stuff. When they wake up, when that hits them, they realize they have to do something about it. There's no more refusing to see where we're at because... You know, no more hiding, no more ostriching sticking your head in the sand so you can just ignore it and, and, and kind of force it out of your mind. None of that. This, these kind of songs, and this song in particular, can force people to wake up and, again, maybe have to realize there's something they need to do about it, too. It's dangerous because people motivated to do something is dangerous, although hopefully, usually, in a good way. But we'll get on to that in a second. It is dangerous to the people that the song is criticizing, the rich men north of Richmond, because of the things that we've already said. This motivates people. This forces people to realize, to think about the how messed up everything is today. And when it does that, it disturbs the status quo and it threatens the people's power, threatens their control. That makes enemies of these people, and that makes enemies of them fast, especially if you really are making an impact. I think you could sum it up by saying this. How many songs at all that have been written reference Epstein Island? Call these people out. There's a danger involved in that because you're affecting or potentially affecting their power. 
there's an additional danger in that while it can motivate us, and I think in some ways already has motivated people, it can motivate the wrong parts of us. This song is a dark, sad song. He mentions himself specifically that it came from emotional or mental health struggles that he was having. That helps make this song powerful, but it doesn't propose solutions. Talk of a of revolution to really, you know, we've got to change the way this country is, has popped back up. And that's in general a good thing. But are we looking at a French revolution? Or are we looking at an American revolution? We have to be careful when we talk about these sorts of things, when we talk about societal change of any kind, not to let bitterness and greed and class warfare infect us like it has infected the, the rich men north of Richmond that this song is talking about and talking and blaming really in a lot of ways. If the cries, the rally cries from this song become about revenge and class warfare and that sort of thing instead of freedom, real freedom and righteousness and virtue and truth, we will be staring very bloody chaos in the eye. Even Oliver Anthony himself talks about this uh, in his statement and he mentions it and actually after his show and in North Carolina that he did, I believe this week, and apparently, from what I've heard, even some of the other times that he's performed, he makes a point to read the scriptures. He makes a point to point to God as the solution for these problems. He, In North Carolina, he read from Psalm 37, may have read the whole psalm. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it yet. Talking about the endurance of the righteous and how the evil will be destroyed by their own evil and the importance of trusting in God through these things and that sort of stuff. He's pointing to the right solution, but this song itself doesn't directly. And if it becomes, again, about revenge and class warfare and that sort of thing, it is not a good time. We will be looking at some very hard, horrible times, even worse off than we are right now. And the last thing is that this song is dangerous because it can make us feel better. This song is not a solution, as I mentioned. And if it can motivate people to find a solution. But if we listen to this song and we have a cathartic release of emotion and then go back to business as usual, we fix nothing. And in fact, we only make it worse because we're going to be less motivated to fix the problems that make this song so impactful in the first place. And make no mistake, we're talking about these problems. We, the people, are the ones who can fix it not the politicians. The politicians are the source of the problem in the first place. Hope that you found this episode interesting. Um, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. All that really helps. YouTube has been throttling me recently, so uh, that really does help a lot. And don't forget the social media that we have, that sort of thing. We have some exciting developments coming up with the Kentuckian that should be coming down the pike in the next few weeks. Subscribing and turning on notifications helps with that. Don't forget about the merchandise shop either. And we have some cool stuff there and maybe some more stuff on the way. Again, some, some interesting things coming down the pike. But anyway, I hope that uh, you all have enjoyed this, found it informative, and never forget that as long as you and I are doing the, the right thing, we make a real difference in this whole world. Ben Ryan Dalton of the Kentuckian, signing off.